<laughs> you know, for, for, for us this year, be 40, 47. But I know it'll be tested. But the reality is, is that if you proclaim the kingdom, please get that in your mind. If you proclaim the kingdom, if you be about kingdom business, then the kingdom will provide for you. I right, pull back up. I think that was verse eight again. And we put it right back and then we'll, we'll move on. I want to make sure that, that you kind of like got that, you know, in regard to because he made sure that I, I was I was on zero. Before he started guiding me, directing me and, and everything. And uh, and when he did that, I remember I had the opportunity to to. Um, you know, buy a nice home. And my, I had one of my brothers uh, uh, said, hey, man, you're going to get it. And I said, uh, this is before I even left the job. And I said, I said, I know God's calling me to full-time ministry. I don't know what it's going to be like over there because I've never been there before. So I'm a, when I, I get a house, I'm going to get it on that side because I don't want to get it. And then and then all of a sudden I'm going through some tests and then I, I, I lose it. I, mm -mm. So I'm getting it on that side. And he, he thought I was, you know, he didn't understand. So he, he thought I was a little nutty, you know, uh, would take advantage of um, a, a great, the great opportunity. I said, no, my heart is locked into to ministry. And uh, but they wouldn't say so. I, I, I knew that they, you know, how they going to understand? All they just understand, man, this is a great opportunity. You giving it up? No, 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 no. But now they see, they see because they see the other side and see how blessed, you know, the Almighty has been to be. You know, and the, and the, the remarkable thing is, is that, uh, you know, you know, for a while there, I was a little black sheep of the family there. But uh, but now they see that I, I passed them. So. It, look, the race ain't given to the swift, nor to the strong, but him that endureth, you know, and enduring is a challenge sometimes, but you got to endure. All right. All righty. But the good news is that he is he is wonderfully uh, provided, and in spite of um, what we see in front of us, because you can't be governed by what you see. If you're gonna be, you're gonna live the life of life of faith. You can't be controlled by what you see. All right. So it, again, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass. You know, so he made sure that that happened for me because all that gold silver I had was gone. <laughs> You know, all right, next verse. And it says, no money for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet slaves. Staves. Staves. <laughs> I was like, that sounds strange. <laughs> for the workman is worthy of his food. He's telling you that when you go and you do these things, then the workman is worthy. So when you do these things, it's going to attract and open the door for provision for you. So don't worry about taking no money. Don't worry about taking no gold. Don't worry about taking anything. All you got to do is just do what you're supposed to do, and it will attract and bring provision to you. I just want, I'm just, I'm taking time to settle down. Why? Because... So many saints are struggling living by faith. And the only, no, 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 let me stop for here a moment and pause here for a moment. You can't get caught up in feelings. You can't get caught up in circumstances. You can't get caught up in people. You can't get caught up in anything but only what he says. It's just not just when it comes to, 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 to ministry. This is when it comes to everything. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> I'm going back and talking. Talk. You know, I'm, I've never, never dealt with, um, you know, dealing with the, you know, drug addiction in regard to over-the-counter or illegal drugs, anything. Never. Alcohol, cigarettes, none. Never. But sugar? That's a chemical, you know. You, you might just say it's a drug. It's a different kind, but 
but but but you don't look at sugar as that. And I was heavily addicted to that. And 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 and, and I, I want to tell you something. To break that thing, it, it requires faith. And you can't give in to feelings. Because them urges come and they still come. Uh, even, even though, you know, they still come. I mean, they come when, when you lease this back and they come, they grab you, they pull on you, say, you better get me. And I'll go and get me some, some saltless chips and I'll just put it in my mouth and just hold that thing in there and tell that, that, that urge leave. And I just keep putting some more saltless chips. Yeah. And more until that urge leaves. It can be it can stay there for a long time. I mean, sometimes a long time. I ain't talking about no minute or two or ten. I mean a long everybody got that. But watch this, watch this. Listen, listen, listen. You know one of the greatest things about breaking that sugar addiction? The money I was spending buying that sugar. I just start saving. And then allow you to accomplish more. Boy, we don't realize how much money we spend or we can say waste on these addictions of ours. As last week I shared. Just imagine how much money you can save if, if you break that sugar red habit. Do you know some people smoke three, four, five, six, seven? packs a day I mean some are chain smokers I've met some I mean chain smokers and, and y'all know how expensive cigarettes are today right you know all right now the, the same thing with alcohol if you break that that addiction and now you just took that money and saved it not not put it somewhere else put it in the bank and let that thing get some in just some because because you were wasting it before Hello, y'all. It's hard for y'all to say amen on this, but no, I'm just <laughs> you, you were wasting it before, and you were getting no returns on it other than a fix, you know, feel good for a moment. So, so what about this one? You know, you know, over-the-counter drug, because now we got a lot of senior citizens addicted, and doctors know that. And they get they put you on these things and they say, well, you can't stay long. But then but they, they leave you on long enough for you to be addicted. And so now you and them got to go and you know, begging it or you keep saying that you, you, you got a problem just so you can keep getting that prescription. You know, and so now you, you got that. Just imagine all the money you saved on that unless, you know, you just got one of those great insurance where, you know, you ain't got to pay for no medication. You know, but most, you know, I even, you know, I did, mom. You know, man, that that that, that medication stuff is is expensive. Look, if I got to spend some money, let me just spend it on some 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 vitamins, minerals, supplements, you know, some herbs. <laughs> it's something that, that that I know that won't have me addicted. Are y'all listening to me? Because, you know, when Mom Brickley, because most of y'all remember before she passed, you know, hey, but she, my wife tell you, man, medication, it's, it's hard to survive, survive on, on, on Social Security if that's all you got. With, 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 with just the medication alone can eat up your check. You don't watch it. You know, it all depends on, you know, how much bad that health issue is. Just the medication alone eat it up. So, you you, you know. Uh, if she wasn't living with us, it'd be hard, it'd be hard to survive. That little check she had. So what I'm trying to get us to understand is that exercising your faith to overcome your addictions save you money. Help push you and allow you to have a better life. You know, getting away from sin. Sin itself, because addictions are still part of sin issue. You know, but 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 just staying away from sin. People people think that you know you know oh you know you talk about sin, da, 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 but they don't realize that that's the thing that's messing your life up. Everything that's messing and screwing up your life is connected to sin. 
everything that's screwing your life is connected to violating biblical teachings. Torah. Translated in your Bible called the law. That's why it's so vital and so important to us. It protects us from our own selves. Because our own lusts and desires can kill us, destroy us. And boy, if you don't get that sugar habit under control, it, it causes health issues. I'm grateful that the Almighty allowed me to get it under control. I remember, you know, uh, uh, you know, because now that I'm young and I, I was, you know, go to the doctor and, and they look at you and say, you know, you you borderline on diabetes. You borderline. And I'm saying, Father, I thank you for getting off that sugar to keep me from crossing the line. Because <laughs> I... Cause I uh, I probably ate enough sugar to, 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 to push me across there. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend like I don't eat sugar anymore. You know, white pressure sugar. I try, I just, very little. And I'm very grateful uh, that, that, that my wife did, that never had that problem, sugar problem. She had other problems, but she ain't had that sugar problem. <laughs> you know, I had it. I, I never forget when she met me and, uh, Y'all heard me tell it before, but I got to say it again, just because uh, to just show you the, the difference. You know, I grew up in the house eating all that sugar, you know, King Sir. Anybody ever ate King Sir? Uh, King, King Sir is nothing but pure sugar. I mean, sugar to the core. All right. How about Cairo Sir? Y'all heard of that? All right. That nothing but pure sugar to the core. How about molasses? Uh, oh, man. See, that's what I grew up on. You know, you know, king syrup and, and, and oh, yeah, you know, king syrup. And then you just you, you, you we call it we call it in the South called sop, it, you know, sop, sop it up with, with some bread. And that was breakfast, you know, king syrup and some bread, you know, or, or you take it, the, take the bread, you toast it and you put it down and then you put king syrup all on it and, and, and you ate it. Oh, man. But also. We had back then, y'all know, you know, it, it's amazing how it just disappeared. Hardly ever hear about Kool-Aid. You remember all the Kool-Aid commercials, and everything? But we used to have Kool-Aid, you know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You know, but we, we loved us some Kool-Aid. It, 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 the worst thing about the, the thing I learned about Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid is number die. Man, do you know that you could dye your clothes with Kool-Aid and we were drinking it? <laughs> well, you could you could dye your clothes with it and we drinking that stuff. But anyhow, all right, so 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 we make Kool-Aid. And so so the way we make Kool-Aid is called King Serb Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. And so th that means it's just full of sugar. Oh, I thought you were eating No, 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 no. <laughs> No, King Serve is so sweet, and that's how it is with that Kool-Aid. It's just like that. So, so Pastor Shelly, she, she, you know, this is before we got married. So she she comes to my house, and so we we do that, right? So she, so she 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 she, she get a glass of our Kool-Aid, and she drinks it. <laughs> you know, man, this is sweet. You know, she did it more nicer. I'll just tell you how I do it. But I still felt the same way. My feelings still felt the same way as, as even though she was more nicer than I am, you know. I knew what that meant. All right. So, 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 so I knew what that meant. So, 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 so I goes to her house and she had log cabin. She had log cabin syrup, right? I had never tasted that in my life. And so she she had it on, on, on pancakes or something, whatever it was. She she had log, and I put that on there and I tasted it. I said, Pfft. I said, what is this? <laughs> I, I said, what, what is this? 
mad. That's what all I do, you know. So, but but you know, because I'm, I'm you know, I'm I'm not under that that the control of that addiction anymore. But anyhow, <laughs> I just, I, just I, I literally I spit it out. I just say I couldn't take it. I said. <laughs> So I was more disrespectful to that. She just said, well, you, you know, uh, you just, can I have some water? <laughs> and then I just said, what is this? No, it didn't taste like, you know, when you used to king serve, log cabin don't work. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. So I'm just I'm just trying to get y'all to help understand about addictions. That's it, you know you know and 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 log cabin is 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 is, is, is uh, cheaper than King too. So it save you some money. <laughs> Again, get away from your addictions. Always save you money. Save you money. Get away from addictions. Yeah, yeah, molasses is good for you, but they're not all that sugar in it. No, I've, I've look, listen, listen. I, I, I've tasted molasses without the sugar. There's a difference than the molasses with the sugar. Yes. Yeah, but you know how they do. Okay. All right, go ahead. I was saying the king syrup and um, K Row is a little different. Um, they don't have high fructose corn syrup. You can buy that, but you want to watch. Oh, molasses. Okay, molasses is made from raw sugar, so it's more natural than king syrup. And it's another, it's another syrup from the south that's like king syrup. I can't remember the name of it, but whatever syrup we buy, we want to make. No, agave is natural. That's a natural one. Agave is sweeter than sugar. For those that don't know that, but it's real good for you. It's 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 um it's a healthy side. Agave, agave, stevia, all of those are from plants. So you you wanna you wanna wean over to that. But when you buy the when you do do the king and all of those artificial syrups, remember don't use the high fructose corn syrup because now you're messing with your brain. And it makes you addictive to it, and you just you can't can't keep getting enough of it because the high fructose syrup is in it. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you to just say about the molasses again so they can get it. But all uh, right, uh, sometimes it's not easy to say the same thing twice uh, all over again because your mind just goes this place that place. Uh, but you 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 got it. But but molasses is, is she was just saying that is it's, it's far better for you because it's a natural and more natural. But they 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 take away the natural by adding stuff into it. But but um, but I had like I said I've tasted the difference between just pure molasses versus molasses with the sugar in it, and my family, the sugar was in it. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm I'm very 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 grateful. But the point is still is is that the Almighty wants us to stay away from sin because sin cost us. And 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 the thing that let you know that had let you know that sin cost us is that. It cost the life of Yahshua in order to pay the price for sin because sin always costs. That's what it's trying to tell you. That's the whole purpose of trying to say it costs. And before Yahshua came along, you had to purchase an animal and offer it as a sacrifice to let you know that it cost. It costs you when you sin. How many of y'all realize that it costs you when you sin? Now, now, now. Sometimes it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a back pay you got to pay, you know, because it ain't cost you nothing up front, and you pay heavily on the back end. But it costs you, and that is the whole major point that we're trying to get across. But when we proclaim the kingdom, it pays. It's not costing you; it'll pay you when you are about the kingdom, not doing good things. See, good things is not kingdom. Doing the right things that he tell you to do, that's kingdom. All right, in case you don't want to do it. I, I'm, I'm on this journey before I even you know, start pastoring. 
All right, so 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 now you know things have run out. So I said, all right, Father, you know, uh, I don't know what to do. So I was in construction, so I did construction painting, I did roofing, you know, I did concrete, I did all, you know, all. So I'm, I'm familiar. With it, so I'm gonna go ahead and and do something. So I go out. And I saw doing things, some things. So it's a person that I that had got us in trouble, and they, 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 they somebody just put up a, a sheet of panel for them and charged them, you know, a lot of money, and didn't come back and do nothing. So I came in, I did the electric for them. I came back, I finished all the paneling for them, everything, and they, and they gave me less than what the person. <laughs> See, I was doing a good thing. But it wasn't the right thing. So I said to the Almighty, I said, Father, you know, now, now, now listen to, now, now I was a little, you know, uptight with that individual. But because I knew I was a minister and everything, so I wouldn't let myself go off. I said, how in the world dare you take advantage of me when somebody took advantage of you? Now I did everything in that you you asked and so 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 I had to I had to you know you know because I would have went off you know because you know it was like a choo choo train on the, in, in the car too woo woo yeah yeah it was I was I was so I went back to the Almighty and talked to him and I said Father you know this 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 wasn't right so what's going on he said did I tell you to do that. See, see, doing a good thing ain't not necessarily the right thing. And so he said, did I tell you to do that? He said, no, sir. He said, you go to your face and you talk to me and you pray. I go to my face and pray. Checks came in like that. I got more money came in from praying than I did. But the problem was is that I didn't see prayer as work. But you don't know how much work it is until you try to pray. And, 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 and try to pray for one hour, like the Bible said. Can you, can you turn me one hour? The disciples couldn't do it. They kept falling asleep. He said, can you turn me one hour? Can you just try to pray for one hour and see what happens? Most saints don't know how to can't do it. Why? Because I don't know about you, but I go to pray. And all of a sudden, you see Lynn on the floor. You, know, you, see, you see this. You see this. <laughs> you, you, I got to put my head down so I don't see nothing. So it was a, it was a challenge for me. To just stay. I'm telling you, it's real work. And, and listen, prayer is real work. And that's why most people don't value it, don't realize how much prayer is. And what prayer can do. Because they think prayer now lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep it. I just die before I wake I pray to the Lord my soul to keep You know, Father, thank you for these truths about Jesus. I thank you. You know, they just think it's something short. No, no. We're talking about real prayer. It's work. And so I got on my face. I prayed. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then he'll speak to me. Say, Go. Go here and, and go back to what I was talking about earlier. Using an example, I go to Brother Jerry. All of a sudden, you know, he, he just blessed me big time. You know, then I'll go over here and he just say, You go over here. He, he blessed me good. Time. Sometimes he'll tell you, Go to a family member's house and, and you go there and you and then all of a sudden, then he'll touch their heart. They're not even saved. And they can't understand, you know, why they want to give you stuff, you know. You know, you go to somebody that, that's not saved and you don't even know who they are, and all of a sudden they just, just want to give you stuff. You just want to give you, you know, they can't, they can't figure out what do you know, why you want to give. Then, then, then on top of that, then there's times where, where I, I would just go to the place where I get my car fixed. And while I'm there, the guy's there, they're talking. He just said, you know what? My wife wants some new furniture. And the furniture we got, we only had it a year, but she wants some new one. You know, and I don't know where it's at. And I'm standing right there. I don't know the man. And he ain't black. So so want y'all know that too. You know, because you know, uh, even though I had a whole lot of them bless me too, but but in this case, he's he not black. And so so I just I just said, I'll take it. 
I don't even know what it looked like. I just know it's a year old. He said, oh, it's nice. But he started describing, he said, you know, floor model t television, you know, I remember the old nice, nice, nice wooden, because, you know, this is years ago, nice wooden piece of furniture floor model, color TV, you know, along with living room set, all that kind of stuff. Man, I would pick, man, it was nice. That's how the Almighty just blessed. You know? And that kind of stuff would just happen all the time. And you just, I just, just, you just have, you just show up at the right time, you know, because all you just wanted to do is just say, hey, you know, when can I bring my car in? But while you're waiting, you hear the guy talking, and then the guy talking say, who, who, who like to, you know, you know, might have it. I say, hey, I'll take it. I got some furniture, but that, look, your old furniture is better than mine, because mine's more than the your old. <laughs> Are oh, you getting my point? And so that's how he ended up blessing me with so much, you know, giving me cars, giving me, you know, conversion vans with, you know, with the TV in it and all that kind of stuff, you know, giving me the what I got there, the BMW that I drive, you know, giving me, you know, gave me a house and then gave me another one. He said, you know, nobody never done that for me because you ain't working in the king. <laughs> you know? He will pay you what you're worth. So if you ain't getting paid, <laughs> now you know how much you're worth. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with a con size of congregation or anything. That it got nothing to do. It just got to do with obedience. Come on, say obedience. obedience. Say it got everything to do with obedience. You know, Brother Greg, you know, just faithful and he, 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 he do, do the music and he do not just do it based on flesh, but do based on kingdom and do what all He'll bless him. He'll take him hides in places that he never dreamed of. It's just it's about kingdom, you know. But but you can't do watch this. You can't do kingdom as a musician. You can't do kingdom in ministry uh, as a minister. You can't do kingdom as an usher, a greeter, if you don't know the word. So you need the word so you can do kingdom. Because because if, if you're not if you don't know the word, you're just doing self. You're just doing what you think, what you feel, what you want, but you're not doing what the kingdom is about. Is that understandable? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's about kingdom. It's about kingdom. Say kingdom again. It's about what? Kingdom. So, it's from beginning to end, it's about kingdom. And if we, we be about the kingdom, then the kingdom will be about us. If we take care of the kingdom, the kingdom take care of us. If we do kingdom work, then he will provide for us for the work we do in regarding the kingdom. Now, some people, in, in, and they call this up in church, and they're doing church work, and they call it kingdom. They ain't, no, no. You know, church work and kingdom work ain't the same. Doing good deeds and doing kingdom work are not the same. I told you, I was doing a good deed. And didn't, and didn't get paid right. But I did kingdom and got paid right. Because <laughs> cause, cause they ain't going to pay my rent. <laughs> they ain't going to pay the gas electric bill. They ain't going to pay the telephone bill. They ain't going to put food on my table, maybe a teeny bit. You know. But doing the kingdom will provide. Are y'all listening? That is what I want to get into your spirit. It's about kingdom. It's about kingdom. It's about kingdom. If we can get that in our spirit, it's about kingdom. And I don't care, I don't care if it's famine in your land, kingdom will provide for you. I don't care if you lost your job, kingdom will provide for you. Now you need to get to know how I feel if you know when you lose your job. Because now you got to see him provide for you outside of, of the job. Because here's the thing you got to get in your spirit. Your job is only a channel. Your God, your God is your source. Job is only a channel. The job is only a channel. God Almighty Yahweh is your source. So your provision doesn't come from your job. Your job is only a channel 
of the provision coming from your God. I'll say this and I'm, I'm almost done. I'll say it again because it gets you to, to remember. When I was working uh, my uh, the secular job, I would confess and I would tell people, I said, hey, you know, Sister Candy, I want you to know, uh, I got to go to my part-time job, you know, tomorrow, you know, 7 to 3.30. That was my, my regular hours. You know, I said, that's part-time job. Ministry is my full-time job. And I will confess that for years. I got to go to my part-time job. But when I'm in, in, at church doing kingdom work and stuff, I said, this is my full-time job. That's my part-time job. Now, in reality, that was my full-time job. And ministry was a part-time job. But I was confessing ministry was the full-time job. And the job was part-time. Getting my mind prepared for what I knew he was calling me to. I knew that years long before it came that he was calling me to full-time ministry. I just didn't know when I was going to take this stuff. I didn't know how to take it. I didn't see nobody, you know, doing it. And I, I, I had no clue what to do. And so when, when that step came, I had no clue how to be in full-time ministry. And then when I did go to people, you know, like other pastors and preachers, they didn't want to tell you nothing. They were too jealous of you, too intimidated that, that, that you may pass them or something. I don't know what they would think. That's why I, 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 I share everything, help. I've helped incorporate people for free, other congregations and people in the middle. I, and, and that's a $1,500 task if they had to pay for it. I don't try to hide nothing. You know why? When you're dead in the grave, none of that stuff you can take with you. Leave as much information and knowledge in the earth with people as possible. So I try to help people everywhere and every place and everything. I try to treat people the way that I want to be treated. Hello, y'all. I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. When we have vain ministers in, I try to take care of them the way that I want to be taken. I, you know, it's, who go to war their expense? So, so I don't want them to have to pay, you know, they, they got to burn the gas and everything. No. <clears throat> if they come from our town, I want to take, take care of their expense. If they, they, they dealing with a hotel, I want to take care. It ain't about whether we can afford it. If I got to come and take money from my own self to make sure, and I've done it so many times, I can't count it, just to make sure that they are taken care of. That's why I can't invite a whole lot of people in because I can't take care of everybody. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> but the point is, is that we should take care of ministers and things when, they, when we invite them in. We should carry and take care of their expenses. You know, when we had uh, 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 our, our pastor from the Bahamas and everything, came, we, we paid for him and his wife, paid for the expense for him to come. We covered that cost. We should take care. This is not an issue whether we can afford it. It's an issue what's right. And because when you do what's right, he will provide for you because you did what was biblically right based on kingdom. And he always make up for it. I, I, I can't tell you, you know, I remember when, when, when I first started going in, down to Florida, you know, this is before Pastor Griffin started pastoring. And I first started going in there and I went down there and I went to preach. You know, I spent over five hundred dollars to get my expenses, everything to go down there. This is years ago. This is over 20 years ago. It was over five hundred dollars to spend for everything. Get offering of 50 bucks. 50 dollars. I don't even take care of my gas. Ain't no problem because I, I I don't do it for money. So I leave there, I'll I'll I'll, I'll stop this place, and then all the Almighty move on the person. I don't say nothing. And the Almighty move on the person and say, I know you're on the road, everything you need. And so they they give me a uh, hundred dollars. I'll go and I stop another place, and the person says, say, I know you've been on the road, everything and everything, and then they give me five hundred dollars. There's my expenses covered right there. 
That's the kind of stuff that had been happening for decades. That I'll go, I'll go do what he say do, because to go to that place was the right place, because that's what God wanted me. They just didn't do the right thing. But then he would pay for that expense. And this has been going on for, for decades. Because it's a missionary journey for me, even when I'm in this country. She, she's saying amen because she know it's a missionary journey. It's no guarantee. I'm, I'm going at my own, but what I go proclaim, he provides. It's not about what they give. It's about me being obedient to what he say. And I'll, I'll, I'll stop here. And we, we'll come back. But I'll uh, I'll pick back up <laughs> next week. They come and then we're going straight into worship right after uh, our altar call. Amen. Praise God. Can we give the Lord a hand? He is so, the Almighty is good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. We got a lesson on um, working in the kingdom of God. We found out how blessed it is to do what God called you to do. Just, just because you're not behind the sacred desk doesn't mean that you're not working in the kingdom of, of God. You want to know, God, what, do, what what is my purpose for you? Why am I here? Why am I here in this ministry? What what what, what can I do to, to help? with the load of the ministry. So um, just because, you know, we, we all we all know in part, we all have a part to play. And the Bible talks about every member supply of every joint supply of. So it's always something to do. Amen. I think about a woman at home. It's always something to do in the house. Amen. Yeah. Always, always, always. So it's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done in the kingdom of God. And so you want to be doing what God called you to do. And you see how pastor said he was doing something good, but God never said do it. And a lot of times we find ourselves doing something good. That's a good thing to do. But did God tell you to do it? That's the question. You want to do what God tells you to do at all times. And that's when, when you're doing kingdom, that's when the money starts to flow your way. So, or I like to say this. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, just keep it to money because sometimes money can purchase some things, but resources, you want the resources to flow your way because you're doing it unto the kingdom. You're doing what you're doing, what God called you to do unto the, unto him within the kingdom. Amen. So let's learn our purpose and let's hold on to it. We don't have to be just like so-and-so and so-and-so because we all, you know, we all variety. God made us variety. He made us different. He made us unique. Amen. I can't sing like somebody, but that's all right. I can make a joyful noise, but, but I can bet I can guarantee you he's not going to call me to go out into the masses like C.C. Winers. I can guarantee that. That's what might be a wonderful thing in my mind. That's where it needs to stay in my mind. Amen. So that's an example of when we look at others and Lord, I want to be just like. But do you know what just like had to pay for that anointing? Do you know, can you handle that price that was paid for that anointing? So get back in your prayer closet, as Dr. Webb talked about. Prayer is work. It is. But I'm telling you, there's so much benefits behind it. There's so much benefits behind it. You, you don't, you really don't know the secrets that belong to the Lord for your life and for those that you're concerned about and for those that he may be concerned about until you tap into the world of prayer. Prayer is the key and faith always unlock the door. So that's our communication to the father. That's our, that's our um, access. We want to talk. We want to communicate. Amen. He wants to talk to you and communicate to you. He want to show you things that you don't even think of. 
but he's not going to run you down and run you over because he's a gentleman. If you don't have time, that's fine with him. You just move to your sister, move on to your brother. When you get tired of, of going around that circle of life, you keep seeing the same poll over and over every year. I see this poll again because you haven't realized the importance of prayer. And we need we need it. It's a vital, you know, you know how important your vitals are. You might not until until you visit a hospital one day. <laughs> until you go and go get a checkup, a physical. Uh, the first thing you want to check is vitals. Because that'll tell them something about you. So that's a vital weapon that we have. Prayer is the weapon that we need to have. And prayer is doing kingdom work. Do you know there's intercessors that's being paid highly? And I'm not saying a ministry is paying them. It, it could be. But the Father rewards that. He rewards it with resources. I, I, I got out of praying for, Lord, you know, I need this so, so much of this money. and I, Lord, just send the resources. Because <laughs> sometimes he's not going to send you the money. I, would you rather, you need a refrigerator, right? I'm talking about a nice one. And they can, they costly. You know, the nice one, ice maker and French door, that's about three, 3,000. And, and probably more now. I, I, I don't even want to know. But I can I, I know some place you can go to get a discount. But, you know, we'll talk about that later. Because, you know, you know, Lady Webb ain't paying. I ain't paying for a price. I can't do it. That, hurt, that hurts my feelings. I can't pay for a price for nothing. That hurts me. You know, because I think about, I think about this. I pray that the, you know, I think about the money, the resources that come our way. And I think about how I have to be a good steward over it. And I think about, <laughs> Lord, this is your money. This is your seed. This is your, your fruit from my seed. So I can't just go through it. You know, I, I used to do that. I know what they look like. <laughs> you go through it so fast, you only know where it is. You don't know what you, what, what you bought. <laughs> It's just wasting spending a, a spinning top. So I'm not paying full price for nothing. Um, and so I just think about being a steward over what God gave gave me. And so, you know, I you know, I told you I pray over the when I go to the grocery store before I pull off out the driveway. We talking, Lord. <laughs> you see how much this is how much I have well, I'm working with, Lord. So I thank you for stretching every dollar. Thank you for stretching every dime. I thank you for leading me to the right places. I thank you for favor. I, I thank you that uh, everywhere I go, people do good to me. Why? Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tither. First of all, he said he rebuked the devour for my sake. He said he would rebuke the devour for my sake. So we have covenants and promises that we don't even, we don't even know about. We don't even say it no more. We say it here, you know. We say the confession here, but that's we say it once a week, and that's it. That's why we don't have what we don't have. You got to say what the word says. You got to remind your flesh, the battle of the mind. The mind is, is just showing, telling you, you don't, you didn't get in it. I don't know why you, I don't even know why you're thinking about it. You know, God, you said that last year. You speak back to that. That's right. That's right. You belong to the almighty. Amen. And if you're doing right in the kingdom, you're doing your part. And you giving God what belong to him. Oh, you can say something. You can say what the word say, and you then you can have what the word says, Amen. So um, you want to, so so I just want to make sure that when I'm purchasing something, that I'm getting the best price. I'm getting quality now. I ain't buying junk. We buy junk. You got to keep on buying junk. You know that, right? You got to keep on buying it because it ain't gonna last but five, ten minutes. So I buy quality, but I want the Father to bless me with the best deal. Bless deal. I make friends when I go in stores. You know, <laughs> how you doing? You know, the great, the love of God just shows up. You know, they might have an attitude, but when we finish talking, the attitude is gone. My mom taught me that. My mom taught me that. Bless her soul. She said, I'm going to make her speak to me. I'm like, just go and get what? I'm going to make her speak to me. Yes, ma'am. I just said, I'm looking. Before, before we go out the door, they laughing and talking. I said, okay, I can learn from that. So, so I just want you to, to be encouraged to do the king, do, do God's word. There's blessings behind it. We got so many stories to tell, and I'm like, he's telling the story, and it's not March yet. But that's all right. March is coming. 
But we have so many stories to tell you that God has really supernaturally, supernaturally taken care of us. People laughed. You know what I'm saying? I'm talk- I ain't talking about the world. People laugh. Church folk laugh. Saints of the Most High laughed and said, they what? He doing what? Full-time ministry. His wife ain't working. You know, you know, it just sums you up. And when we got a house, oh, Lord, when we first got our house to move into, nobody, then people didn't believe it. People would show up and just had to come see it. They didn't come see us. They came see it. We know. We know. See, people, are, you got to you gotta really put your feet into the ground of God's word and and be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of God. You got to hold on to, as the old folk would say, God's unchanging hand. You got to stand on the word of God. Because people will change on you just as sure as you're born. You know, they'll change on you. I thought about some some old cliche that said, just as sure as you're born. They'll change on you. As soon as you bless, you'll find out who your real friends are. As soon as you bless, because it should have been me. It could have been me. But if you wasn't so mean (laughs) and so judgmental, so jealous, so envious, you just push yourself down the line a little bit further. The Bible tells rejoice with those who rejoice. Hallelujah. So I'm just here to, (laughs) I'm just up here to help us take in what was, was, was told to us about kingdom work. There's a whole lot of work to do in the kingdom. Amen. And remember who your source is. The almighty is your source. The job is a channel and we thank God for channels. Amen. (laughs) Do we thank God for channels? Don't act like you don't need the channel now. We need the channel. But just remember, it's a channel. He is our source. Don't depend on that job because they can give you a pink slip at any time. Amen. And now you got to depend on the Almighty who is really the source. He will pay you for your work and your labor. Amen. 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 He will pay you. Um, I, I heard this from a man of God that I look up to, and he said, God will. I want I want to share this with you because it blessed me. God will tell your secrets. Now, why did he say that? Because the Bible talks about what you do in secret. He will reward you openly. So God will tell you secrets. Amen. So he see you behind the scenes putting seed in the ground. So every time there's an opportunity to put seed in the ground, the seed is for you. The seed is for you. It's it's bringing fruit back to you. Don't ever uh, feel like oh, it's time to give again. It's a blessed, a good time for your income to go up. It's a good time for you to plant seed into the ground. It's a good time for you to watch God do what he said he would do. And um, and remember uh, to find your purpose in, this, in, in the kingdom of God. Find out what God called you to do and then stick to it. Stick to it. 40 years in March. Pastor Webb stuck to full-time ministry. 40 years. For- <clears throat> yes. Give the Lord a hand because he, he's the one that did it. Many times he wanted to get a job. Go and go, just go and, go and help him out. Let me, Lord, let me help you out. And God said, son, I got you. Now, I'm not saying everybody should do that. You better know that you know that you know that you know. <laughs> because whatever God, when all ever God guides, He provides. So obviously, He called them to full time ministry, right? Because forty years later, full time ministry, and I don't, it don't look like He missed a meal, does He? Okay, and we 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 eat we eat really really good. We eat really good. Um, so we just, we just, I just wanted to, I'm up here to encourage you to act on the word that was said today. I pray that we took notes because we're not going to remember everything. And if we didn't, we can always buy the DVD. Or we can always go on online now. But you want to hold on to this word because this is, this is, this is meat on the bones. And this is, as my sister said, life changing. This is, this is something that stick to the ribs. You can always go back and pull from this this um, message because that's what it's about, doing the kingdom of God, doing the work of God. And and he will pay you for what you're worth. He will pay you. Uh, 
not sister so and so, not brother so and so, not pastor Webb, but the Almighty will pay you. And you you want the Almighty to pay you because he he got he owned a thousand the hill the the cow the cattle on a thousand hills. He said the silver is mine, the gold is mine. He said the earth is the Lord's and the fools thereof. You want the man who made the earth to pay you. You want him to give it to you because sometimes we can be limited. I got this, but I don't have all this. But the Father, He got it all. But when we work in His kingdom, He knows. Um, he knows the worth and the value that we're we're doing, and we want to, we want to do His work, Amen. And we want to be glad about doing it. You don't want to look like you baptized in lemon juice doing the work of God. You don't want to do that. Then just don't do it. Just like when you when 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 it's time to give, don't give grudgingly. Keep it, please keep it, because you're not re- going to reap a blessing like that. Give to the Lord with a with a cheerful heart. He he will not do it. He will not abandon a willful and cheerful giver. Amen. 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 I think yes. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we want to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, obey the voice of the Good Shepherd, and what he would have us to give. Uh, I do want to say, because I, I didn't um, give you the outcome of the person that was demon-possessed, and I closed my door on her and just said, ah. But the next day, we got them delivered, and they got totally, completely free. Those that remember the story, you knew that, but for people that are watching, they don't know. Uh, they just thought I gave up on the person that didn't. I just needed to, to regroup <laughs> and come back and deal with it. We got them completely, totally delivered of all the demonic spirits. And it was what the Almighty showed me that name and exposed that name. And then that became the very thing that taught me about inner healing because had to take him all the way back to his childhood when the spirit entered and because of a a loss that took place death of a friend and then came up again and that began to help me understand how vital important inner healing was because if you do not allow yourself to become healed and whole then the enemy will always keep returning back as Yahshua makes reference to in scripture that uh, when you see the house cleansed, then it bring seven more, which means eight demons. Now your state is worse than it was at first. So when you, when you get rid of these spirits and you get rid of these addictions, you got to keep it away because you don't. When it come back, it comes back stronger than ever. So um, uh, I'm grateful we got them delivered. But uh, we're, we're still in the, the month of January, and I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, and, uh, because uh, it's my birthday. And uh, for those that are watching, say, oh, how young I am. Well, I turned 65 years old actually today. I'm happy to say so. You know, uh, took 65 years to get here. <laughs> And uh, uh, I was telling earlier, and my uh, brother-in-law would say, oh, you old? I said, yeah, I'm grateful, you know, because, uh, if, if, you know, if, 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 there's only re- one requirement to get old. You got to live. And so then he had to laugh again because he knew it was true, you know. So I said, you know, well, because uh, if you don't live to be 65, that means you're dead. So... What alternative you have? I'll take living. I'll take living. But as we shared, uh, for those that are, uh, are watching that like to participate, but mainly uh, us, uh, those that mem- members, uh, we're taking pledge, and uh, there's some things we want to get done for the ministry, and we ask those that. Um, that the Holy Spirit will move on your heart in, in terms of uh, we do not pressure people or beat up people. We, you know, if they don't tithe or this, that, the other, just uh, or they don't give, uh, uh, 
But I do know there are those that we have shared and those that want to be on staff. Okay, now you got to lead by example. And and people who think otherwise don't know scripture in regard to because all leaders must lead by examples. We must be first partakers in leading and first partakers in giving. First partakers in setting the example of how to live out this walk. And if people don't want to do that, then you don't want to be a leader. Uh, but people want to be a leader without being a leader. They want to tell, just tell people what to do. Some people like just being a supervisor, just like tell people what to do, but don't want to do things themselves. You know, they just want to supervise, you know. You know, it's like the old folks used to do, you know, don't do what I do. You just do what I say. You know, no, you got to lead by example from a biblical vein. And so we do. And so I'm trusting, uh, matter of fact, I, we, I pray with Pastor Collins and, um, and he said, this is going to be the best year of our lives. And so I stand in agreement with them on that. This is going to be the this for us as a church. This is going to be our best financial year. And uh, I was down, and so I wasn't able to do the things that I normally do to create wealth the way that I normally do on a personal level. No, because my you know I was just down for for for, for years. And um, so it, it 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 affects the outcome of everything. And so things are, are, are tight. But this is an opportunity to keep exercising faith. So I'm, I'm reaching into my poverty and I'm taking three grand and I'm sowing it to reap a hundredfold. And I'm trusting that for the, for the church because I'm always thinking about you and the church and things more than myself. Uh, even though at this stage you, 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 you need resources uh, because you're not always going to be, quote, the, the lead person in, 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 in the church just because of age and time going to just push that out of the way anyhow. You know, and I don't want to just, you know, be forced out. I want to I want to step out gracefully and, and let somebody else go ahead and, and do. And you, you still oversee, but let them do, you know, in the name of Yeshua. But but the best year. So we trust in this for covenant east and west. This will be the best financial year. And we're thanking him uh, uh, for, 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 for people as well. The Almighty touch in your heart and, that you know and he spoke to you and you know you need to be here, then uh, hey, come on. We, we're looking for you. And we'll welcome you with loving, open arms. And uh, we, we definitely do so. Uh, and uh, You've been away for a while, and hey, don't worry, you know. Uh, we'll put that spiritual ring and robe on you, and we're going to rejoice with you. No, I just want to make sure we're not going to give him a little ring. <laughs> but we will rejoice and put that spiritual ring on you and put the Almighty to bless you. And Now, man, if he speaks to my heart and, and, and tell us that's what we're supposed to do, then I'll do whatever he say. But if he ain't saying it, I ain't doing it. You know, do what he say, because guess what? The blessing come in doing with what? What he say, because doing a good thing ain't necessarily the right thing. We want to do the right thing, the God thing, in regard to that. And so, um, so, uh, so I'm kicking that off in the name of Yeshua uh, with that pledge, and I'm and, and it won't be the end because I'm gonna add some more to it as he, he as he provides. I'm gonna add more to that. Because I'm trusting for him to provide for me personally, but also I'm trusting for him to provide for the for us as a ministry as well. Because we do a lot. I just uh, don't. I, I'm, I'm looking for God to bless me with a, a good second, third, uh, because we do so much. I don't talk about it. See, they can talk about it because here's the thing. Here's the thing that happens. When I... I when I talk about it, I'm talking about in the past because you got, you know, a lot of people, you know, in the flesh. You know that, right? Hello, y'all. How many of y'all know that? Yeah. 
You got a lot of people in the flesh and they be in church. Yep, in the flesh. And so you start talking about the things that God done and the things that he done for you, things he did and things you were doing to help. It. And then people think you bragging and it, 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 and you just talking about what God done. You know, and they, they take it and twist it and misinterpret it and pass it to others and others in the flesh and they twist it and turn it and until, you know, that's why it's good for somebody else to say it. You know, and not me necessarily say, you know, in regard to it. Because so much of what was done, a few of us did so. And I, I've done, and, and when you do it, it's, it's hard to not say what you have done as unto him. The Bible said we're going to be boastful. We're going to be prideful. we be prideful in him. Most people don't know that word in King James say he that glory, let him glory in the Lord means he that's prideful, he's boastful, let him be glory in the Lord. So if you're going to be prideful, do it in him, not in yourself. If you're going to be boastful and bragful, brag on him and what he has done, not in yourself. You know, and so when, when I talk about how the Almighty provides for me, I'm bragging what he done. Because I'm proud of what he done. I had one one of my kids who you know they got caught up and they was you know in talking in terms of I would talk about how I lived on less than five thousand dollars a year and he said all they kept focused on is uh, I was living on less than five thousand a year. I said you wasn't paying attention to what was going on. You was you were in the house. You saw these did, did, did we live like we were living on less than five thousand? You know, I was, and even as they got grown, you know, they said did, did you were you paying attention? Did you see the cars that we were driving? Did you see all the stuff and the cars I gave you because I gave him a lot of them. You know, did you pay attention to all of that? But you just you said, oh, I just paying attention to your testimony and what you say. Yeah, I'm bragging about God because you try to live less than 5,000 years. See how see, see how that come on. Some of y'all try and see what happened. Only way you survive like that. You better be in Africa somewhere in one of those poor countries, you know. Because uh, in America, trying to live on that, you, 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 you're not going to do too great. Unless you're living with somebody and they covering all of the, you know, the rent and the gas and electric and stuff, then you can survive if they cover you. But but uh, <clears throat> providing for a family and doing, you know, family eight, no, nah, it ain't happening. You know, you can barely do that on your own, just just you by yourself. That's why I brag. I just like I brag about and talk about how God healed me of rheumatoid arthritis. I'm all constantly talk about that. And how he healed me migraine headaches. I'm going to talk, talk about that. You know, I can't help but brag on him. Because I sure couldn't do it. I couldn't heal myself. And I couldn't live on no $5,000 a year without him providing and doing superly, abundantly, uh, beyond all I could ask or think. Hello, y'all. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I had, I had that. I had you know, I told you. I remember. I told you about family member. You know, you know, the, the, you know, it was, it was it used to be a member of the church, and then they would they say, say, Pastor, you, you ought to get a job. You know, so you you don't you don't be a burden to the to the church. Get a job. I said, okay. I said, go in and and, and help out in the finance room. And he went in the finance room. His mouth shut. Why? Because he saw I would take care of the church. Church wouldn't take care of me. <laughs> but the mind, when you when you your mind is just on carnal things, you you don't you don't get it. Because naturally is no way this could be. You know, I remember what we had one member, and I'm gonna start with this because praise team about ready to, to we ready to get into worship. But the praise team, <laughs> the praise team will get into worship. I gotta say it again. But I, I had one member, the wife remember. And, you know, if she don't remember, I, I say the, the name began with an S, you know. And so, so she, so she remembered who. It, and so they, they were, they were good member too. And 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 I would give my testimony at that time. I was living on less than three thousand. And so he he came to my house, you know, and he went in my house. He looked at my house. And he was just shy. He said. When you say you live on less than three grand, I was expecting 
<laughs> I guess he's maybe living in a shack. <laughs> you know, living in the outhouse. <laughs> Uh, you know, living in a uh, you know nice townhouse, you know three bedroom, a bath and a half, and you know nice furniture, nice cars. He, he just, he was just. But see, that's the God I serve. Amen. So I don't know which what God you serve, but I know the one I serve. He is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Do you, you want to do the confession? All righty, right after Dick finished in the praise team, we, we want to get, start worshiping the Almighty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 65 years old. Mm, remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please stand so we do the confession. All right, ready? Father Yahweh, I thank and praise you for your word. I take this opportunity to confess that same word over my finances. Yeshua, I know you are the high priest of my confession. I thank you, Father, for providing seed for me to sow at this time. I'm a cheerful giver, an excited giver, and I know that when I give, it shall be given back to me in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I speak to my seed and to my harvest, and commanded producing Yeshua's name. I sow in fertile soil, my church, my pastor, and the kingdom of God. Thank you that the devil is rebuked for my sake, and that blessings pursue me and overtake me every day of my life. Your word declares, if I serve and obey, I will spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. We are debt-free, Covenant Brick Ministries Incorporated. Break congregation is debt free. Thank you, Father, for setting up people now whom somehow, somewhere, will use their power, ability, and their influence on my behalf. I set and resist myself to receive what I've spoken in Yeshua's name. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for allowing me to reach 65 years old. I thank you, Father, as you see fit, March, 40 years in full-time ministry. Father, if you see fit in April, 38 years of pastoring. And Father, I thank you Forty-seven years of being in ministry. I thank you. Some of you don't know, but most of you that have been around do know. As soon as I got saved, God called me into the ministry. And I thought he made a mistake. You could be seated in present Lord. I thought he made a mistake. Because I thought that you should, you know, be well trained and things of that nature. You know. And the same thing I felt about pastoring. That's why I didn't want to do I needed a mentor. But the Almighty was showing me, I want to mentor you. And not knowing that even before I got saved, he was mentoring me in leadership. He would mentor me in responsibility because I, I had to start taking responsibility at three years old. <laughs> if you had, to, you had to be born back then to understand what I'm talking about. You know, when they said don't work it, don't eat, they meant that. At three, you're going to do something. You know, they don't get by what y'all get by, doing around, just play and do nothing. No, you work and then you get a chance to play. But, uh, not knowing that he was equipping me for what he was calling me to. But you look back, hindsight is always better than foresight. You know, and I can look back and I can see, see what he was doing, but I couldn't see it to, back then. 
but I'm very grateful. And I'm also very grateful for those that, especially those that have been around for a long time. And I thank the Almighty for certain family members. Um, my mom was going to another church, her and my dad. But when I started, I didn't ask them to go because they were going somewhere else. I'm not that kind of person to try to pull people from other churches. I've never been that way and still not that way. When I, when I started pastoring and I left the church that I was part of, I didn't try to pull one member out of that church to become be with me. You know, uh, and if any even talk like that, it's just a, I try to discourage it. Because if God called you something, then he'll provide for you. You don't have to be taken from others to do so. Well, today people just do that. They, they're going to take and split a church and do all sorts of things. But I am very, very, very grateful. And so as we're, we're doing this, just be mindful. Even if the Almighty permitted to go all year long, I'm just going to be thanking him and praising him and giving honor to him for 40 years of full-time ministry. You know, providing for me in the desert, <laughs> in the wilderness, doing the supernatural, you know, and then learning to stay out of murmuring and complaining unbelief in the process. Hello, y'all. You know, I am very grateful. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. I am very grateful. And I'm grateful for you because you know what? When nobody called me the pastor, I remember we had three members and uh, I remember their names. And, and I remember just like with yesterday, uh, we had started out and Nanny's gone on to be with the Almighty. Not Nanny. Yeah, Nanny. Because I get Nanny and Nanny mixed up <laughs> sometimes. But uh, she's she gone to be with the Almighty. And we started in her house with Bible study. And then it, it eventually evolved into where we are today. And then we had a, another member. Her name was D. And when we went to start the, to, to, to start the church, she gave me a card. And in the card, it addressed me as pastor. And I cried like a baby. <laughs> I literally just felt like this. I could, I, I could almost cry again today thinking about it. Why? Because I never wanted to be a pastor. never thought about being a pastor. I had no, I just didn't want nothing to do with it. But for somebody else to see it and call it, it hit me because it was something that I wasn't trying to see of myself. Even though I was walking to be obedient to do what God said do, I still didn't, I still didn't want nothing. But when someone else did that, called me that, it just hit and I broke. And I weep like a baby. Maybe worse than a baby, I don't know. <laughs> But to see people, you know, be faithful, it touches my heart, you know, like Sister Candy and Brother Stewart and, 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 and you and those have been around and even Shawnee has been around here since she was about nine years old. You know, you know, I will say that her kids are acting better than she did. <laughs> <laughs> no, she 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 knows the truth, but she was, but 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 we love her. We're proud of her, and she's been here ever since she was was nine. And we appreciate that. Touches your heart that longevity. You know, she ain't nine no more. <laughs> she she. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's 43 years old. She's she proud of that, uh, you know. But uh, but others, you know, my mom, my dad, and others like that, and then Brother Jerry and Sister Rita, and all of them, they've been around for a long period of time. I don't take that stuff for granted because you don't have to be here. But as I always say, don't take it for granted because I don't have to be here. So we should never take each other for granted. You know, pastors quit all the time, you know, and, and they leave and walk away and, uh, and things of nature. But 
I am so grateful for the and, I'm, and grateful my kids. You know, being a, a, the, each one have been a part of the ministry at some point. I don't take that for granted. You know, I thank the Creator for everything, for the good, the bad, and the ugly, because all of it causes you to become who you are. I thank my mom, you know, she's 92 years old. I thank the creator for the good, the bad, because everything about my mom helped me to become who I am and I could not be who I am without her. I, and she helped me, the good helped me, the bad helped me to become who I am. I'm serious. I am so grateful for that woman. She called me this morning to say happy birthday to me. You know, she didn't want to get off the phone. And then on the, you know, you y'all know when she called you, you know, you talk to her, you all know the first thing. When you coming to see me, those are some. They, they everybody know that those are the first. When you coming to see, when you coming, on your on your way down. <laughs> I say, yeah, only in your mind, mom. <laughs> only in your mind. I'm on my way in your mind. <laughs> I'm on my way. But uh, I am so grateful. I am so grateful. And I'm, I, I, I just want to express that without any doubt how grateful I am to the creator, how grateful I am to you, and, uh, and, and, and just all the challenges that we've been through as a congregation and you still being there. I thank the Almighty for that. So on this, let's get the Hebrew word for, and so we can... Uh, dismiss ourselves the Hebrew word for the week okay you mighty man hey man let's give the Lord a hand 40 years man Woo! you know Yahweh was was with you 40 years wow that that's that's a long time long long time but uh yeah see I, it, it gave my heart it made my heart glad to see the dancing girl. That's what I'm going to name her now because I, I watched her. Man, she got moves. She, 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 she dancing with a purpose. Amen. But, but once again, I, I don't want to re-preach the word, but I, I, I got to say something. I got it because that word was so good. But see, uh, when, 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 when we do his work and seek his kingdom, he takes care of us. But see, what I, what I want you to keep in your mind is the greatest gift of all is yet to come. Amen. He, you, you, he, nobody can pay you enough to go into heaven. Right? So if you don't get nothing else, think about the, the, the big reward. Amen. To live in eternal love forever. You know, that, 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 you know that's, that's what happens when you seek his kingdom. But I I just thank Yahweh for just sending the pastors loving me. Amen. And he, he's got a mansion up there for me and everything. So, yeah, see, the younger you get, the more you can see it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. But I, I just, uh, I just, I, I'm just so happy just to be a child of the king. That's all. That's all. On, on the great leadership, you know what I mean? But, okay, this time I'm going to have my right-hand partner come up with the Hebrew letter for the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. Amen, amen. I get ready to say pastor, I say apostle. <laughs> Oh, you just going to ignore me like that? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with <laughs> uh, uh, The word yeah, is Lamech. Say that. Lamech. Is it right? Lamech, that's right. The boss says right. Lamech. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Hebrew, you read this way. So... Tongue authority controls. Say that with me. Tongue authority. Oh, tongue authority controls, man. 
Come on, boss. <laughs> All right, um, and then you got a, a king. And what it symbolizes is that the, the tongue authority controls, it's talking about God's tongue controls, or God's tongue with authority controls. It also put me in uh, mind of James when it says, if you can control your tongue, you can control your whole what body. You know, and um, then you got category. You know, they're still dealing with the, the stick. And the letter is L. And the value is 30. All right, so what I wrote down says, the tongue authority controls is to teach, train, and discipline. So it applies to the shepherd staff. Then it says the cattle, uh, uh, cattle gore in training, discipline, student. And what I, what I uh, begin to look at when, he, when I think about the tongue, or, you know, God's tongue, you know, speaking with authority and controlling us, what I think about is the fear of God. How many know what the fear of God is? What is it? Who said that? Reverence, okay. What else? Anybody else? The fear of God, watch this, is don't sin. <laughs> it is. Don't sin. You know, if you really feel God, you won't sin. Amen. So it says, the fear of God and keep his commandments. Love him and his word and obedience to his commandments bring purpose and satisfaction that cannot be found anywhere else. You know, uh, and let you understand that the most important thing, if you want eternal life, watch this. I don't know if y'all gonna believe this one or not, but if you want eternal life, I gotta move my teeth now, wait a minute. <laughs> it's falling out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, when you get my age, you don't care, man. <laughs> you know, um, uh, the, the, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give me a second. Oh, the, tongues are to, oh, oh, the tongue authority control, and if you want eternal life, is that you got to constantly feed on the word. Why? Because the word is eternal life. And that's why he said we are born again by the word. Not by flesh and blood, but by the word of God. And it's the word of God. You, that's why we got to stay in the word if we want eternal life. You know, if you stay in the word, and then you also have to receive his spirit. Because you can't get revelation without his spirit. Amen. So, Lamech means what? Tongue, authority, controls. You know, that's very important. Because you think about it. The way we control our life is through words. And I, 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 I'm going to say this and then I'm going to shut up. <laughs> um, I found out, I, I, the Lord told me to write a confession about all my weakness. And I, so I started, I wrote that confession. I've been saying that for like two years now, two or three years. And what I'm finding out through that confession, it, it, it started giving me a revelation of knowledge. Right? It started giving me revelation of knowledge. And it started coming to pass in my life. And he said, you don't stop until you see the whole thing come to pass. You know, because when I started out, I, I couldn't believe none of that stuff I wrote down. <laughs> I didn't. Because I come, you know, because the whole thing is you keep looking at yourself. And God said, you got to keep looking at my word and what my word says about you. You know, and I just wanted to share that. I do have some other stuff, but I ain't sharing it. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Let's, let's give him a hand again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see Lamet, uh, the pentagraph is is a, a, the shepherd's rod, his staff, his cattle gog, things that control. Amen. So that that's that's what Lamet is and everything. So, so the Hebrew word for today is teshuvah, 
uh, uh, repent, teshuvah, repent, teshuvah, repent. And, and, and it comes from the root word uh, uh, re return, return. And that's what Yahweh, Yahweh won, when you repent, he wants you to return to him with all your heart and soul and, and you'll have a new beginning when, when, when you truly repent. See, it, and, and, and repent, it also means you regret. So, you know, you're sorry, but, but it, it, it's more than that. He wants you to return to him. But, but, but see, you also, when you, when, 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 when you sin, you shouldn't be happy. You, you, you should feel so, so sad or sorry. You, you should feel like you let the father down and you did and everything. But, uh, but, 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 but re, re, return to Yahweh and, 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 and the new beginning. See, because see, when, when a lot of times, I can only speak for myself, but the times I did fall short, Satan will tell you, oh, you ain't, you, you, you still ain't right. You, you ain't right. But see, Yahweh don't want you to think like that. When you repent, it's a new beginning. It's a, it, it's a new beginning, see. And, 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 and what he really wants you to do is a repentant is a continuation. He just, he wants you to have a pre preventive maintenance, okay, right? When, when the seed comes in, he wants you to, to, to cast that seed down before it happens. You know, just don't, just don't repent. Repent daily on your week, on, on, on what you know that's weak. Don't, don't wait till you, 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 you commit the act. Repentance is a continuous thing. It's just not a thing of when you fall short, amen. But uh, but but yeah, see, but uh, it, 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 the, the word is good and everything. But 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 re repentance is a uh, it, 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 it's it's a good thing. It's a brand new start and everything. But to shava, okay, repent, amen. Amen. Let's get our mighty hand. If we could ever get this in our spirit, that when we repent, turn from our sin, receive the atoning sacrifice of Yeshua the Messiah, that we are righteous. You're not trying to be righteous. You are righteous. Now you just got to know how to be righteous. It's like this. If I deposit a million dollars in your account, you're a millionaire, right? You're not a multimillionaire, but you're a millionaire. If you take one dollar from that, what are you? You're no longer a millionaire. So when I deposit that million in you, you are a millionaire. Now you just got to learn how to be what you already are. You, you, you just know how to maintain it and increase it because he wants you to increase. The Bible says that even when we give, it increases the fruit of our righteousness. It's hard for people to understand because the enemy likes to attack people about giving. Y'all know we ain't taking up an offering, so you know we ain't trying to do that. But, but people don't realize this. Giving ties into every aspect of who we are as a person and every aspect of who we are within the kingdom. Giving taps in the gifts of the spirit. It taps into how to live and be because it's it's about giving. And, and giving is not about just about money. See, because that's what people, they, they just fail to understand. But the reality is, is that the way that you want more money, you got to give it. You don't give more money by praying for it. You give it by acting, giving. And giving taps into increasing righteousness in us. That's not me talking. That's the Bible talking. It increases the fruit of our righteousness. Get this in your spirit. Whatever you give to, you become devoted to. Whatever you give the most of your money to, you'll see that you have an allegiance to that. Wherever that is, I chose. I'm not talking about you. I said I chose to try to make sure that 
all my money goes more to God than mortgage, more to God than this, that, or the other. He, he gets the majority of everything. Why? Because wherever your money is, it shows where your heart is. Just see where the majority of all your money is going. You can see where your heart is. Some people's heart is in education. That's where all their money go. Some people's heart is in a man or a woman. That's where their money go. Some people's heart is in porn, and that's where their money go. And the list goes on. Wherever. I can always know where your heart is by seeing where your money go. So I greatly appreciate that. I had as uh, Pastor said, oh, but uh, I, I stepped out a little bit because I had a family member and they, they normally don't give me much call. So when they call, I said, ah, oh, I need to see what's, what's up. Uh, but I found out that they, they, they said happy birthday to me, but they had, had stopped by and left off some checks. And so uh, I, they, I found out they gave the dig. And so I said, oh, I didn't know, but I, as I was talking, looked in the office, I said, okay. So you got one for you for your birthday, one for the church. And uh, so thank the creator for some love. Yeah, get some love from family. Okay, we have another presentation to you. We're ready, Sister Katrina. Can we look to the monitors, please? a blessing. Yes, Pastor Sherry and Elder Keon Bird. Uh, they they true sons and daughters, I'm telling you, uh, without a doubt. And I got some wonderful true sons and daughters right here in the house, but they are definitely uh, outside. Uh, they have proven themselves to be true sons and daughters. Uh, and I thank the Creator for them. All righty. So on that note, uh, I guess we um, we got a message coming from what, uh, Brother Greg, Minister Greg? I don't know how to touch. <laughs> Let's say that so we can be dismissed. And uh, at three o'clock, uh, we got a little time, but at three, then that's, we, we had the birthday service and we thank you for your love and your, your support and you being here. And we greatly appreciate you and we love you greatly. And I know uh, Pastor Sheila greatly loves and appreciates you. And uh, she shows it constantly. And uh, sometimes I'm so busy, I don't get to maybe show it like I, like, I, like I want to, but I definitely always appreciate you and uh, greatly, greatly glad to see you. All righty. So on that note, we're ready. All right, y'all ready? 
Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace all right one more time sing it again the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give Yahweh will bless you and Yahweh will keep you. Yahweh will make his face to shine upon you and Yahweh will be gracious to you. Yahweh will lift his countenance towards you and Yahweh will establish a loan for you. And we say, Amen. 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 Share the love with y'all with each other, and we are dismissed. Don't forget, celebration, birthday celebration will be next door at 3 o'clock.